What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K. Back again with another one, as I promised. Not on CP time. Don't ask what that is. <laughs> hey, yo. Hard knock digital culture, baby. I told you we was going to do this. I told you it was going to happen on the routine. And this is just the beginning, man. I'm glad to be here tonight. First podcast, solo podcast I've run at night in a long time, okay? Uh, let's see here. We got some things here that ain't working the way they supposed to. What the heck? Okay. Let me see here. If it, if it was, Hey, look. If it wasn't Streamlabs, then there wouldn't be an issue. <laughs> but while we're getting everything tweeted out and all that fun stuff, let me just say this, man. Um... I went and ordered a 90, I mean, I, I went and ordered a new computer and I'm, I'm very excited um, for that new computer and a couple things that we got coming, right? So first off, let me talk about this new computer real quick before we get into everything. Um, while everybody was going ape shit over these deals that were on at, uh, 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 what do you call that place? At, at Amazon for Prime Day? Your boy MM2K had copped a whole bunch of deals over at Newegg, man. There were a lot of stores, right, um, that were trying to piggyback off the success of, uh, you know what I'm saying, off of uh, uh, Prime Day, and they just couldn't hack it. It just looked so pathetic to me, right, until... I went over to New Egg because I was looking for a computer on the first day of Prime Day. I put one in my wish list. And by the time I came back, <laughs> that mug was gone. Like it wasn't even there anymore, man. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? So because of that, I, I was a, I was very, very disappointed. That I couldn't get that laptop. I mean that PC. It was a very nice looking PC at that as well. And um I I should have been able to uh you know what I'm saying? I should have been able to get that because the, the the purpose of Prime Sale, the Prime Day is to give you the best deals on both days, right? You would expect that maybe they would have better deals on day two to try to keep you, you know, to keep you honest on the site. But I went over to Newegg. I found another computer that had a 2070 in it. Um, it had an i7-8700 in it. Um, and yeah, it came with like uh, two terabytes of 7500 RPM RAM. And it also came with uh, um, a 250 terabyte. I mean, nah, damn, no, nah, I wish. A 250 uh, gigabyte, um, uh, 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 um, holy cow, hold on, what's going on here, came with a 250 gigabyte, uh, solid state drive, but that really didn't mean much to your boy for the simple fact that I, um, well, it does, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it, and, 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 for the fact that, you know, if I have extra games that I want to store on a solid state drive, right, I can do that via that, um, you know, that extra drive space. But I got, um, actually, I got a, uh, uh, um, oh, shoot, hold on, 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 hold on. Okay, come on, man. Come on, man. Why y'all messing with me, man? All right, so because of that hard drive that came with the computer, it's cool. I can put extra games on there. You know what I'm saying? Um, not a lot, maybe two or three, you know what I'm saying? You know, games right now, like a hundred gigs. So that's like two and a half games. You know what I'm saying? If I, if, if, if we do the, the 4k assets or whatever you call it, you know, however it works, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's a lot. Um, so I might be able to put two extra games on there, but I got a 500 gigabyte M.2 drive that I ported over from my other uh unit and that was very important for me to be able to do that 
to get this computer because I want to be able to render better videos as far as game streams are concerned, you know, um, and particularly streams that require a lot of heavy lifting on the uh, back end from the, the GPU. So having that 2070 means a whole lot. Um, it also means a whole lot for the simple fact that, um, you know, I can, I can do these streams now, 1440p. I don't need, I don't need 4K. I'm just put it to you like this. I don't need 4K. 1440p, 60 at ultra settings. Man, come on, man. You can't get, hey, look. I mean, you can get better, but still, I don't, I don't need, I don't need, um, I don't need 4k. I want, I want them frames. If I can get 1440p at ultra settings and I can get like close to a hundred frames, my God, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I'm not worried about no, uh, 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 I'm not worried about no, um, no 4k 60, man. I don't care how good 4K looks. It's not topping 1440p at almost 100 damn frames. Now, right now, for the experimental purposes, what I did was, um, I for like, Rage. Rage has been the main game since I got this unit that I've been running. I have Rage cap at 60 frames, ultra settings. Buttery smooth. Maybe a couple times it dipped, but buttery smooth while I'm streaming too. Streaming takes a lot of resources. And then when you start using that new NVEC uh, encoder, you know, this is a lot of streaming babble, or whatever. I'm, I'm about to hop right into the show. But when you use that new NVEC uh, um, 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 option on Streamlabs OBS, man, it, 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 kills, it kills some resources. They tell you it's supposed to be less CPU heavy and more focused on the GPU, but I still suck some power out of your machine. You know what I'm saying? So it's important to have a beefy machine if you want to uh, stream videos at a high quality, right? And um, you also want to play them. You want to visually see them yourself at a high quality. That's that's asking a lot out of your machine. Mm. Platinum, what's up, bro? What's going on? So if you guys could tweet this all out, do all that fun stuff for your boy, because um, we're going to get into it today, man. We are going to get into it today, and for those of you that are watching live, you know, it'd be a big, big favor to the channel if you would do the following. See that right there? That is the free messaging app, and uh, when you send me a message directly through the th free messaging app, I'm able to see it. I'm running on 85 different screens. The beauty of uh, me transitioning from the unit that I was on to now is that I can now take all my 1440p screens and put them together. I had to split them up because what I was doing was, well, let me go back a little bit as the chat fills up. You know what I'm saying? What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? What is up? Um, what I had to do was late, early, if y'all can remember early last year, your boy had to drop off the scene for a second. You know, no, I didn't, I didn't catch uh, uh, hepatitis, nothing like that. Right. I, uh, I thought we was going to have to move. Um, I'm in a part of, I'm in Western Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh to be exact. We thought Amazon was coming to take over some, 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 you know, do some eminent domain stuff, them in the city. Um, you know, so we had a scare, but Amazon didn't end up coming. Um, so then we didn't have to move. With that being said, the, uh, unit that I had, I was like, man, I'm gonna have to be more mobile with this. Like if I'm gonna cut video and all other stuff. So I made a conscious decision to sell the PC that I had at the time, which was a 1070 Ti. It was a, uh, uh, oh man, it was an i or an i5 6600K, um, you know what I'm saying, unit. I sold that for an Alienware i7, not a Ti, but a regular i7, but it was an 8700K processor, right? Um, so it was like pretty much a trade-off. The laptop was still pretty much more powerful than a computer. And I had the portability factor. But then, you know, you know with a laptop, you're stuck. The, st the hardware, the components are static. So you're stuck. You know what I mean? So because I was stuck, 
I was like, oh man, I got to make, I, I got to get something better than this, right? So then um, I've been looking for PC deals for a while, trying to figure out what was going on. Looking at the, I was actually looking at the um, AMD process. I'm glad I didn't get it. And then Prime Day happened upon us. And then, you know, I got this unit. And again, it's a 2070, uh, two terabyte, 7,500 RPM hard drive. Uh, 250 gigabyte SSD drive. I already got 450 gig, 480, I think it is. I'm sorry, 480 gigabyte M.2. You know what I'm saying? And you know, you could just look at my look on this channel after this show. Look at my Rage 2 footage, and you'll see how crispy and clean this mug is, man. It's beautiful, you know. And I did a little bit of Days Gone too with, with with my capture card. Drop no frames. I used to drop frames all the time on the old unit. You know what I'm saying? But that hardcore gaming, that's what we all about, man. But y'all didn't come here to hear me, you know, uh, uh, slobber over my, my, my gaming rig and all other stuff, right? Y'all came here because y'all wanted to talk about Xbox, okay? And I know Xbox is the popular thing to talk about because a lot of people like to bash it. And that's not what I'm doing here. And if you could, tweet this out. Make sure that everybody knows what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it rocking and rolling. Um, that's not what's going on here, folks. What's going on here is... As an Xbox gamer, I came to Xbox for a particular reason. They were making AAA games. And you can see the type of games that I'm into. You know what I'm saying? You get The AAA games that I like were were synonymous with the system the western developed shooters or game you know open world games except for you know god of war you know that one that, that one that one is a sony masterpiece you can't take that from them right but xbox were developing those type of games that you know were more into exploring and were you know had the fidelity you know what i mean not just the over the top you know, action, but, you know, more realistic type stuff. They brought that, they were bringing that to the forefront with their games, right? Um, and you've seen a lot of those games on PC, but a lot of people don't like PC because the uh, of the, the, the plug and play factor. It's not, it's not the greatest, right? You always got to catch frames and worrying about this and install that and all that stuff. It's not fun for the average gaming consumer. Xbox wonderfully brought that, same type of top-notch fidelity, those same type of nuanced worlds to a box that did have that plug-and-play factor. And that's what I loved about Xbox. They were always striving to bring you the best out of that arena. Sony was in a different arena. Sony has their own motion picture studio. You know, Sony was a little bit more commercial on the scene. They commercialized gaming, you know. They made gaming cool and commercial. I know because I've been gaming for 30 plus years. I've been around since the very beginning. Okay. So when I say that they, you know, before it, it, people used to get attacked for liking gaming, believe you me, I'm, I'm not making that stuff up. I'm serious. Okay. Uh oh. All right. Okay. Now we're back. Okay. Okay. That's all it took for me to do. Now, with that said, um, that was their arena. And then they built their they built their branches or they branched off from that, from that commercialism, that cinematic sense. You know what I'm saying? So the gameplay wasn't their forte. It was more about the presentation, the aesthetics. And that's fine. So you had two, excuse me, two powerhouse systems. One that was for the hardcore. Another one that just had saturation out the wazoo, out the ass. And, and pause and it was for you know what i'm saying like everybody knew what a playstation was and everybody pretty much had a goddamn playstation and then when the playstation 2 came out that made that more relevant because of that oh thank you for the 100 bits more room says xbox gonna come for you <laughs> left out loud what's good hey yo i appreciate it man thank you for the 100 bits um bruh morwin the bots been coming for me for a minute, man. They've been coming for your boy for a hot minute, you know, and we're going to speak the truth. Let, let's, let's just get into it. I'm glad you dropped that, man. 
Guys, because I was I was reminiscing on what Xbox meant to me, but it doesn't even matter, right? It doesn't even matter. I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use my Xbox brethren lingo when they say, "Who cares if Rob Ferguson want to take smoking out of gears?" Right? It's his art. So really, I gotta tell myself, MM2K, who cares about all that nostalgia about the Jade Empire and the Mass Effect and the Bioshock and the Arm of Dangerous? Who cares, bro? That element is gone. So you can't be nostalgic and treat them that way, man. You cannot be like that. You have to keep it real and deal with this new entity under these new circumstances. And that's what I'm here to do. And that's what I'm here to show all my Xbox brethren what to do. Don't just lie down for this crap. It's garbage. More one said Xbox is a form of shell. Yeah, exactly. Let me show y'all. Let me tell y'all something, man. Xbox right now has a coffee shop mentality when it comes to gaming. They want to give you games that look like Sea of Thieves, but call it AAA, right? If y'all remember that infamous Eurogamer interview that Phil Spencer did. This new regime under Phil and being spearheaded by Satya's grand vision of all Microsoft products. Yeah, we putting him back in the spotlight too. He's going to get some of this work. They think that giving us games like State of the K2 and Crackdown 3 are the mature theme titles that we want. <laughs> Crackdown 3, I wanted to be on the level of Halo Gears of 4. You know, I beat that into the ground. But you get my drift, right? Y'all get it. They don't feel the importance of showcasing AAA games. They don't like speaking directly to hardcore gamers anymore. Now, for someone that has a hardcore gaming channel like such, how does that make me feel? How does it feel? <laughs> I'm going to tell you how it feels. It feels like that I need to stop whining and crying. We need to take action, and I need to show all of y'all how to take action, right? So let's do this. How you take action, how you address a situation like this, when Xbox not only is not giving you the product and services that you want, but they are also affecting you on the periphery, even if you're not an Xbox fan. Now, how are they doing that, you may say? They're doing that based off of the fact that you got Phil Spencer that showed up at E3 and told you no. I don't want to show you the hardcore stuff on stage like you want. Because I'm more excited for the stuff that I didn't show you. And secondly, I care more about these mystery boogeymen that are out here in these governments that think gaming is all about blood and gore. I want to let them know that gaming is more than just kills and headshots. And then, that was such a mystery to your boy, I didn't know what the hell that came from. Or where the hell that came from. And I'll give a shout out to him even though he was he was uh, responsible for some fuckery, you know, against my broadband bully brethren. I guess everybody got it. Some people are late bloomers, and you can't be mad at them for being late bloomers. Now, who am I talking about? Homie Jess Gordon of Windows Central. Homie Jess Gordon has been speaking some truth recently on his podcast with Rand. Now, big up to Rand. I'm, always, I'm a Randolph Thor fan. You know what I'm saying? I'm, a, I'm, not, I'm proud to admit it. I'm no, no shame to my game. I'm, I'm a big fan of his work. You know what I'm saying? He's been on a couple of other podcasts that I've done, more notably Scram Punks. You know what I'm saying? Check them out on the PNTS network. Shameless plug, right? On my own shit. <laughs> but with that said, now everybody want to come around, but they're coming around to 12 hour, but at least they're coming around. So at least I ain't got to sling mud 24-7 out in the mosh pit. Because now George, Jess Gordon, if Jess Gordon's saying it, it must be golden. But what Jess Gordon said is that that Microsoft is very, very worried and concerned about gaming becoming diagnosed as an addiction in the World Addiction Association or whatever that gets called, right? So normally, under those pretenses, what you do is you find out what guardrails you got to operate under, 
but you still got to provide the goods and services to the people that keep your lights on. Not Microsoft. They go to those same people that keep their lights on and they say, hey, hey, we're being challenged. And you know us. We're afraid of our own shadow. So because of that, we are not going to ruffle the feathers at all for anybody. We're going to turn the E3 stage into a stage of, hey, we want to present for these, these government entities so they don't shut down gaming. Like, that's what they're going to do. Nobody's, going to, nobody's shutting down gaming. Nobody's going to do that. What governments would like to do is they like to tax you. And after they tax you, they take advantage of you. Right? They don't want to get rid of gaming. Gaming is the, the most lucrative business out there. They just want to be able to get their hands in, in the pie too. Okay? Thank you, Ray Janot. This is the truth. Can you hold on one second, please? Okay. So with that being said, he's more concerned about these mystery people that just made a diagnosis. So that's why there was a segment at E3 where AC Bongos, I think it was, had said that I'm so addicted to this game. Talking about a particular game that was offered on Game Pass or something. And Phil Spencer turned to him and said, we don't use the word addicted to describe games anymore. And he tried to like chuckle it off, <laughs> you know, to fly it under the radar. But that supposedly is a big concern with Microsoft. So if you got people, an organization that reacts like that to adversity, right? Opposed to a company like Sony, who in light of adversity says, we make adult games for adult gamers. And you're stuck liking company A opposed to liking company B, then you need an action plan. Give me one more moment. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. So with that being said, and again, if you got something to say in the chat to catch my attention as I miss it, I appreciate that rage not more win. <laughs> he said I'd be mafia. You know what I mean? It's crazy out here, man. Whoops. Uh oh, what'd I do? See, I got so many screens and stuff going on, on up here and so many things revolving around me. I'm 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 just dropping stuff. All right, so here we go. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Okay, okay, got that up. And then lastly, I got this up. Okay, all right, good, good, good. All right, so back to the situation at hand. So I just, I mean, I, I wanted to point that out. I thought that was very important to, to point out and let everybody know that we have a dilemma. We definitely have a d dilemma if you're an Xbox fan. And again, this ain't got no, Really, I'm joking when I say these things about PlayStation. Let's take PlayStation out of it. I'm not telling my PlayStation people to go. You can come and opine and enjoy. But if you're an Xbox fan, there are some things to worry about. I just highlighted them. Again, that old coffee shop mentality. They think that Sea of Thieves is AAA. They think when... We were asking for hardcore gritty games, bangers, that we were going to get that courtesy of State of the K2, and more notably, Crackdown 3. This is what they thought. That's a problem. Then you get at E3, the big stage for the hardcore. 
And then for the people that are there, they spend thousands of dollars to get there. And you don't show the gangs on stage. Then you have the audacity to say, I'm more excited to show you what I didn't show. I'm more excited about what I didn't show you. Like you said every other year, we have a problem. We have a problem with respect. Microsoft and Xbox don't respect us as gamers. And we got to grab their attention in order to get their respect. And here's how we do it. This is what I'm proposing. In order to get Microsoft's respect, we got to let them know that we're not playing with them anymore. That we're no longer going to idly sit by and just keep giving them money. Like this next, this gen is a wash. So whatever you gave this gen or purchased, it, that's different. But the best way to get Microsoft's attention is in the pocketbooks. That's always been the most effective form of protest. It's the pocketbook. So here's what I want to do. I want to highlight everywhere Microsoft is at market-wise as far as gaming is concerned. And I want to associate what you're going to want to do if you are the disgruntled, dismayed Xbox gamer and you want to understand what you need to do in order to deal with Xbox. Give me one second. Okay, sorry about that, guys. All right, that'll be the last interruption. Okay, so with that said, the first thing that we're going to want to do is going in, and keep in mind, this is all integral in regards to your transition into next generation. Again, this generation's already washed. If you're going to buy something a la carte here or a la carte there, that's fine. But I don't recommend, this is what I recommend. Playing these games right now, you know what I mean? Building up your library of, of stuff of the Xbox One family before the next generation is fine. If you're playing, if you're paying a month to month subscription, I urge you to go and lump it up somehow. Uh, there's something called the Life Hack. That allows you to put that dollar on Xbox Game Pass for a dollar and then go find a bundle deal of Xbox Live, bundle it all together for a dollar and whatever you, your subscription thing is. And I would say do that until the release of the new Xbox, which is going to be November 2020. I wouldn't go past any subscription service till November 2020. Now, in preparation of transitioning from xbox because this is what i'm telling you to do in preparation of that <laughs> more would say yeah no man yeah you're absolutely right that's 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 who this was that's who that was i can't i can't i can't do nothing man <laughs> with that said you got to hit them in the pocketbook. You got to hit, hit them in the market and let them know that you are not going to let them get away with what they're doing, that you're ready to transition from Xbox gaming. 
And here's how you can do it without skipping a beat when you make all your investments. Number one, let your service lapse. Like after 2020, do not make any further investments. Now, this is the moderate. I want to say that first. I'm going to precursor with this. This is the moderate template. Let your service lapse. Do not extend your Xbox Live or your Game Pass subscriptions. Now, let's keep it jiggy, folks. I get it with the Xbox Live. You're like, hmm, how do I do that? I don't know. But I'm telling you, get it up to November 2020. I don't even recommend doing that. But get it up to November 2020 and don't pay past that. And if you do that, you'll keep your existing library of games. You know what I'm saying? You know, you might lose at risk these free games that you're getting per games with gold. But you know these games with gold games are trash. So here's what you do. You keep that existing digital library. And you keep the console. Okay. And because you're going to keep the console because if you want to play those old games, you can use your old console, even on different devices. They're going to allow you to utilize the xCloud version that runs off of your Xbox device, which is free. xCloud, the streaming option, is not inherently free. If you utilize the Xbox um, housed version of xCloud, meaning it's running off one of their servers, you're going to pay a subscription service, and I reckon that subscription service is going to be $10 a month. But if you want to run your old games, if you want to run your old library off the whole xCloud thing, you can do a free of charge from your console. So I would say keep your console. All right. Then on top of that, utilize this initiative where Xbox. That's my cat. Please ignore my cat. It's between my cat and my wife. They don't want me to do this podcast, but I know y'all want me to. So I'm going to keep it rocking and rolling. <laughs> um. This cat, I'm going to kick, uh, uh, you know what? P Peter's going to be mad at me, but this ain't going to be on camera. Give me one second. Okay, I'm back. All right, now. With Xbox game, with, with, with you, what you're going to want to utilize is that Xbox digital program that they've been talking about. Unless they flip-flop on that. I wouldn't be surprised if they flip-flop on that. But with that service, so you're supposedly going to be able to take all your physical games and swap them for digital. They're going to give you a digital code. And you're going to want to utilize that, okay? Because again, you're making the transition... You're not going completely cold turkey. I get it. You still want to have a connection somehow to the old game. You don't want them to just go to the wayside, and that's fine. And MM2K is showing you how to still keep your old library while you make this transition. So you take those old games, the physical ones, you trade them in for digital codes. Okay? And again, you use that kept console to where you can play your games on the xCloud and more importantly if they are xbox play anywhere games now that you have a digital code for them you <laughs> more what is stupid <laughs> um you if you have a digital code you can now utilize play anywhere because now you have a digital copy of the game you see how you're you're ahead of the game now Okay, so now you've done that. You've let your service lapse. 
you keeping your existing library of, of, of games, your physical games in your console. You're going to hold on to those physical games that you still want to play, even down the road, and you're going to trade them in during that whole Xbox physical to digital conversion thing, right? You're going to do all that. That's unless they flip-flop on that like they have VR and everything, every other goddamn thing, right? But if they don't flip-flop on that, you do that. And you most importantly want to do that because if you trade it in for digital, you'll be able to utilize Play Anywhere, which will be key. Okay? Now, that way if you're ever interested in future titles a la carte, like say when Halo comes out, when Halo comes out, your boy MM2K ain't going to say, oh, I can get that on Game Pass. Halo is a $60 game. So why not just pay the $60 up front or get it on Steam? What I'm going to do is get it on Steam and find a maybe a discount because, you know, Steam is chock full of discounts. And if I can do Play Anywhere off of Steam purchases, which I'm pretty sure they're going to allow you to do, Because Steam is just a storefront. I believe you can still, you can connect your Xbox Live Windows entry passageway to a Steam account, kind of like with Ubisoft. So if I can buy it off of Steam and it's still play anywhere, and I get it at a discount, I don't need Game Pass. Why would I pay Game Pass for more than six months and forget about it like I have been doing? I'm like, oh, I don't pay for, I don't pay for Game Pass. For another month and I don't even play that shit. And then one day, instead of me shutting it off, I just lumped it all together. And my Game Pass don't expire until July of 2020. But I'm letting it lapse. I'm letting everything lapse. I'm letting everything lapse because this is not Xbox. This is Windows Gaming. There's only Xbox on paper and name only. And Windows Gaming has to prove to me. They just happen to buy... They, Windows Gaming... I look at it like this. Windows Gaming bought out Xbox when Satya Nadella came in and Phil was, was put in charge. Windows Gaming now has to convince me to stay on board for what they're going to do with the Xbox product that they have in their hand because they don't have the same vision. Not at all. So I'm letting it lapse. I'm letting my Xbox Live lapse, which... No longer is going to be Xbox Live. It's, more, it's really Windows Live. And in order for me to get invested in Windows Live going into next gen, Microsoft has to convince me why I should do so. Simple as that. All right. So that's for those of you that do want to keep that library. Great. Do it. And... Homie King Reaper 74G says something very important in the chat. Thank you for coming by, homie. And I glanced and I caught your, your thing at the last moment. You can use the free message in chat because I almost missed that. Because I have to refresh my chat. With that said, the point that he brings up is we don't play on PC. But that's okay, baby. Because I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how to rock shock the system anyway. I'm going to show you how to finesse the system anyway. Okay? This is how you finesse it. Now, if you're a PC gamer or you have a PC and you don't mind either playing on a PC or utilizing your PC to finesse the system, and it don't got to be a PC that you really play on in order to finesse it. You just got to have a PC that allows you to download Steam. Then listen to your boy. This is how you're going to want to do that. If you have PC Game Pass, let it lapse. Let it lapse. It's not worth it. Let it lapse. There are better services out there. Even if you're a pure PC gamer, I'm going to tell you about them. Let it lapse. <laughs> okay. You instead want to make your main hub the combo of the free stadia yes i'm saying it listen now hear me out the free stadia that's coming in 28 um, 2020 and you play plus you play plus 
on PC is already better than Game Pass on PC. And you play plus is only going to get better because they are going to be dropping triple A Ubisoft games day and date or even earlier in you play plus. You play plus has already been advertised at E3 as a, as a partner program to go along with Google Stadia. Meaning that if you have a you play plus program, I mean if you have a you play plus account and you have even a free Google Stadia account, you can stream your Uplay Plus games from your PC on the go. So that version of the xCloud, the PC version of the combination of Uplay Plus and Stadia, is already going to be better than what Microsoft is going to have to offer on PC. Xbox Game Pass on PC in no way, shape, form, or fashion will ever, 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 ever be able to compete with Uplay Plus. Triple A bangers are not coming to Game Pass unless they are made by Microsoft. And we already know that Microsoft's commitment to Triple A bangers is as fruitful <laughs> as a desert. Okay? So, Again, if you fell into that hype, make sure that you let it you let it lapse. And then when I mean let it lapse, I mean uh, PC Game Pass. Utilize the free stadium and you play plus. Now, if you do see something that catches your eye, or you do have old Xbox games and you kind of fit into that category where you kind of go back and forth between consoles and PC. This is where I say you can finesse the system. Again, you're going to want to do what the, I recommended for the console gamers to do. If you have any physical games for Xbox, trade them, trade them in for digital. Especially if they're Xbox games that allowed you... That that are that that are um, play anywhere. Get that digital code, and now you can transfer that digital game. I mean that physical game into a digital game that's now play anywhere, and you can play it on your ga god dang on PC. Okay. Now let's just say, for instance, there are a game or two from Xbox that you like. Buy it all a cart. Get it a la carte, meaning get it standalone. Do not suffer, do not sucker yourself or become a sucker for Game Pass. Think about it. Halo Infinite. If I want Halo Infinite, after six months of Game Pass at full retail, I've already paid for it. After maybe even four or five months, off of a Steam sale. I've already paid for it. Don't let yourself get fooled with that all that other Ghibli gook that's offered in the subscription service so you let it lapse in your mind. You let it lapse in real life. Now for my console gamers, here's where it becomes a benefit for you. Let's just say you don't play PC games. You don't have to. With Play Anywhere, buy it on PC, you have a Windows subscription through PC that you don't play, pay for, and you can play the same game on your Xbox. The only downside is, is that you're going to need Xbox Live in order to to play it on Xbox. But if it's a single player game. I don't believe that you need that. So in essence. You can find Halo. On Steam. For cheap. Cheaper than you can on a console. At launch. Buy it on Steam. Play it on your Xbox. Right? Right. 
That's how you can finesse the system. Now, that, now again, and you can really use that and finesse the system if you want to be one of those guys that you still keep your, or if you come across some cheap Xbox Live subscription codes. I would not, and I mean would not, even if you're going to do that and go that far and make investments into next generation, let's say if you're like, oh, I want to be able to play Xbox Live mm, on the console and I know I got to pay for it. Go on CD keys or wherever, buy the cheapest codes you can. Give them the least amount of money as possible. And finesse that whole system. Okay? Now. Another thing that you're going to want to think about. is let's just say, if you say to yourself, you know what, MM2K... I just don't like Google and I don't want to deal with Google um, Stadia and I want to be able to stream my games. What other options do I have? Well, Steam actually is more ahead of anybody, I want to say, as far as streaming is concerned because they actually have a beta of their streaming service active now. And you know what? It works, people. It works. I've tried it. I've tried it several times. My son has tried it with Borderlands. And we both love it. So check it out. It's the Steam link. You know, go through the rigors of trying to figure that out. And when I say I'm not being fair, it's not that challenging. It's not that difficult. Just look it up. You can actually do Steam Remote Play off your off your PC right now. You can do it right now and play your games anywhere on your phone. You can do it right now. It works. With that being said, again, if there are all the cart games or separate games, did you just say, okay, I gotta get a Halo, I gotta get Gears, maybe I'll get Fable. Fable. I said Fable. Fable. Buy it on Steam. Stream it on Steam. That's it. That way you're not giving them the subscription service money that they want you to buy and forget about. And they want to entice you with the shovelware. This is how you finesse the system. And my console people that I told y'all that, in, you know what I'm saying, even if you don't play on PC, like my homie King Reaper 74G said, even if you don't play on PC, why not buy the game on Steam at a discount because PC games are cheaper than console games when it comes to launch. Buy it on Steam and utilize the play anywhere. And you don't need Xbox Live to play single player games, right? So you own the game. It should be in your library. You just download and play the game. So you can do that on single player games like, like, like Fable. Right? So there you go. And if you don't have an Xbox, but yet you still, you're just like, well, MM2K, I want to use xCloud. I don't want to use Stream. I don't want to use Steam's streaming service. I don't want to use uh, Stadia. Oh, excuse me. For when I play on Xbox, I'm gonna. I want to. I want to see what this Xbox, this X Cloud, is all about. Okay, you can still do that. Buy a cheap used Xbox, an Xbox One S, because all you're doing is using the the Xbox. You turn it into a streaming device. Get an Xbox One S or a SAG. Get one cheap. Get one used. So that money's not going into Microsoft's pocket. And use that as a streaming device. Right? Right. So that's it. For the moderate way. Of utilizing... Transitioning from using Steam in order to uh, 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 um, 
All right, I'm sorry. That's it for the moderate way of converting over from Xbox. And not paying these subscription service, not paying these services on a month-to-month basis where you get it and you forget it like they want you to. But let me go into the the let me go into the most severe way. If you're like MM2K, I'm fed up. I don't want to do this shit anymore. I'm tired of Xbox. I'm done. And I and I'm not gonna do this moderate thing. Because I get where you're going, MM2K. You want to do this moderate thing because you want to hit Microsoft in the pocket and let them feel the force of the hardcore. Pause. <laughs> uh, let me see here. It says you sent a message? I don't see it. Uh-oh. Is this thing cutting up? Please note. Oh, crappers. Hold on, let me see something. Uh, 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 let me see something. Because they said they said they're sending stuff via the free messaging app. Uh-uh. Let me see. Uh, enable. You know what? That might have been my fault, Moroon. Can you send it again, bro? That was my fault, man. Uh, you know what? No, no. No, you might not have to send it. I think I got it. Hold on. Let me check and see. Let me check and see. Thank you, Fideli, for following the channel. I appreciate it. Dashboard. All right. Let's see here. No, you know what? My bad, Morwin. My bad, bro. Send that again through the free messaging app. It didn't go through. I didn't activate something, and I, that was totally on me, man. I, I deeply apologize for that. Or you can put it just through the regular chat. I'm so sorry. But I got everything rocking and rolling now. I don't know what the hell happened. Let me, let me, let me try it out. Make sure everything is good now. Test overlay. Okay, yeah, now it's working. Okay, my bad, my bad. All right, so you can put it in the chat, um, or you can put it. I ain't going. Okay, let me leave that alone. So here's the thing, man. Um. Again, you, you could be saying to yourself, MM2K, I am not even going to play these games with Microsoft. I'm officially done. I'm done. I'm done playing with them. I'm done uh, uh, trying to reason with them. I just want to go and just go to a new platform, okay? I want the RIP Xbox podcast to be for, forever and ever. And there's people that think that way. And I understand, I'm not, I'm not mad at you. Because again, this is all strategic. This is all in, in the spirit of trying to get Xbox to wake up. But again, why are we trying to make a Fortune 500 company, the richest one in the world, for crying out loud, wake up? Why is it that we got to sit here and do all this dilly dabbing and you buy this on Steam and do all this other shit so they can understand what we want? They know what we want. But they're just not listening or they're not paying attention. They're not paying us no mind and they're not doing so because we're not hitting them where it hurts. But you could say, it's like, hey, look, MM2K, you have all that nostalgia with Xbox. I don't, brother. I could care less. I gave them a try with the 360. I was impressed. Xbox One, I was not so impressed. You know what I'm saying? This is horrific. I am leaving. All right. Well, guess what? You ain't got to roll with the party. But MM2K got something for you too, right? <laughs> I forget about you because you know what? I, I'm not even mad at you. I'm not mad at you. 
It's not your fault. It's their goddamn fault. And if you're going to leave, then so be it. Leave, and I hope you get the best gaming experience ever. And I hope you can rub it in their goddamn faces because this is ridiculous that it's come to this point. But a lot of people feel this way. A lot of people feel this way due to the siloed and the disconnected approach by people in Redman who are disconnected from the rest of the goddamn gaming community. And you have somebody that they consider a gamer himself and Phil Spencer who through all of his gaming, I don't, I, don't, I don't doubt that Phil's a gamer at all. But he's a very siloed gamer. Meaning that he's the type of gamer that just stays in his own little bubble and cannot connect himself to other genres and all other venues that he doesn't partake himself to like. And that's bad. Like your boy. I'm not the biggest, I was not the biggest PlayStation fan prior to the advertisement of the PlayStation 5. But I can respect what they like for at PlayStation. I want PlayStation to still be around regardless if I never liked the title. If I never liked God of War. The simple fact that they're out there and they're being competitive, I think is key to development of better titles for everybody. I'm going to give you a prime example. I am not the biggest fan of Days Gone. But it's not horrible. It's not a horrible game. To say the least, it's not a horrible game. So I'm streaming it right now. And if you were part of that stream, you got to see me act like a kid in a candy shop. When you get to that one part, where you 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 break into like this this hub I mean not this hub but like this this center where I guess scientists were doing some secret studies or something like that and you play a recording and when that recording played through my joystick or my gamepad MM2K was like what I thought that was so dope. I thought that was just such an innovative approach that they're trying. Do they have to do that? Does Sony have to do that? No, but they're trying different things and they're supposed to have the inferior technology base, right? They have the inferior technology base, but they're doing things like that. And all we're getting is different spray, uh, spray painted uh, controllers. So, when you have all parties involved fighting vigorously to outdo one another, and then you ain't got to do it in a rude manner, but when they're fighting to do that vigorously, the people that win in the front end are us, the consumers. Rage or not, I appreciate that, man. So when you don't have that, then that leaves the pressure down on it, on, on, on your competitors. Let me give you an example. Me and homie Rage and I, he stuck it out with me while I was playing my, being sad as hell in, in Rage 2, <laughs> showing my true colors how garbage of, a, of a, a gamer that I am, right? As my homie Maslin says, big up the triple B. Rage and I stuck it out with me, right? And even through my division streams, Okay. But with that being said, let's just say me and Rage and not, we're, we're, we're racing. We're doing a 50-yard dash, right? On your march cassette, go, boom, they fire the gun. Me and Rage not scoring. He's like, yeah, that MM2K, man, he got me last race a little bit, man. I used to smoke this dude, and he got me last race, man. But I'm not, I'm not letting this dude get me this time. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to outdo him like crazy. And you're trucking, and you're getting me. And I stumble and I fall and I don't even attempt to get back up. I'm just laying there. Like, eh. <laughs> Landed on the side of my face. I don't even try. And you notice this out the corner of your eye. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to turn around and you're going to look and it's just me and you racing. And you're going to slow down. You're out of just out of 
pure habit, you're going to slow down a little bit. You're still going to beat me, but you slow down. So guess what ended up happening? Because I fell and I wouldn't get up and compete anymore. You slowed down. You won the race. But the fans didn't get you get, didn't get to witness either of us break any records. Because that's what they really wanted to come and see. They really wanted to come and see a performance that they've never seen before. An ultra performance. Not just one entity beat up another entity. So when you don't have that driving competitive force consistently, even the brother that is doing this thing that, it, that, that got the form and it didn't fall, just by circumstance, they're going to slow down. And that's what we gamers don't want. So again, back to my point. Where if you are that type of gamer that says, MM2K, I get it. You done spent almost over a damn hour telling people how to go on Steam, swallow the blue pill, watch some Fred Rogers, you know, eat, 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 eat some bonbons and then go back and put on one sock and turn around and rub their stomach seven times. I'm not trying to do all that. I'm just done with Xbox. I'm done with them. Morrowind says, try to get in the loots. I don't know what's going on. Hey, yo, this is crazy, bro. What's going on? Hold on. Let me log out. I'm sorry. Hold on. But this is crazy, bro. It's not showing me anything. Let's go to... This thing called reports. Nope. Let me log out. Log back in. Let me try to log back in. Uh, let me do this real quick. I'm sorry, y'all. I appreciate you, though, more one for at least trying, man. Hey, look. This is the Streamlabs uh, derogative uh, application, and bro, you know the saying: if it, if it was if it wouldn't be broke, then it wouldn't be Streamlabs. <laughs> if it wouldn't be broke, then it wouldn't be straight Streamlabs. Yeah, it gave me nothing, so I'm gonna have to get that fixed, man. This is this is all systems running in your live. That's a bunch of baloney, man. That's horrible. Did anything even flash on the screen? I'm going to remove that. Let me try something. No, I can't. I can't donate to myself, unfortunately. I don't know why. All right. Okay. I'm sorry about that, Morwen. Just drop it in the chat, bro, and um, I'll, I'll repeat it. Thank you so much. I know. I know, man. I just... You know what, me, man, this is, again, I don't, I, I appreciate everything that you guys do. I appreciate the effort and I'm, I'm a real stickler. I'm, I'm a perfectionist. It may not seem like that, but I'm a perfectionist and I get real angry when you have these people that make a whole bunch of money to mess, to make messed up things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And Streamlabs is just a piss poor application. It's only being used because I transfer from machine to machine. And because I transfer from machine to machine, I need my, I need my overlays and stuff put in the cloud. But Streamlabs is, is, is a piss poor application. It's just been designed for them to make money, but whatever the case may be, you know, but I appreciate you anyway. If you drop it in the chat, I'll read it. With that said, if you are one of those gamers, like I've just highlighted, that don't want to go rub your tummy 12 times and grab the magical lizard and, 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 and blink, you know what I'm saying? While, while, while singing a Barney song, if you want to just leave Xbox, okay, this is what you do. Okay. Um, let your service lapse. Let it lapse. Let your service lapse. 
whether you have Xbox Live Game Pass or Xbox PC Game Pass. It's little apps. Like you did in the other scenarios. And then, I'm going to drop this site in the chat right now. Pay close attention to the site. The site is called playerauctions.com slash Xbox Live account. <laughs> it's exactly as it reads, baby. It's a place where you can auction off your Xbox Live account. And I want to show it to you. Show it to you live on air. Let's do this. Now you're gonna have to excuse it because this trash ass uh um what do you call it? Trash ass uh 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 all right, let me turn that back on. Streamlabs, okay, you saw as my avatar went away. And I deeply again, it's just this trash ass stream labs. This is um <laughs> more one said Dirk Grigley deleting you out of his phone as we speak birthday and profile pic and all <laughs> and yeah <laughs> okay alright it's coming through um I think that's my test thing that could be me as y'all can see on the screen right now it's coming through and it's, yep, that's me. It says, what up? And salute, guest Fideli. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. I see it now. It's working more when, but that was funny as hell. <laughs> hey, yo, Dirk. Like, next scram box, me, Snowbody, Neethles. <laughs> no MM2K, bro. No MM2K. All right, so here's the deal. Um... This is an Xbox Live Accounts auction site. And it's legitimate. After Sea of Thieves, here's how you boycott one of this site. After Sea of Thieves, right? Um, people were like, you know what? It, to be frank, they were like, fuck this shit. <laughs> we're tired of this shit. We're not gonna deal with this anymore. This is absurd. This was the AAA game that you that, that, that you're gonna give us? It's like, oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. You got to excuse that. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm editing on the fly. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that on the fly. All right. They said, yo, what the hell is this shit? They said, oh, no. No. And they started selling their, um, their Xbox Live. What's the cause? They sure did. On this auction site. Now, this auction site's been around. So, as you can see, like right now, there's someone selling their Xbox Live subscriptions for $9.99. This is their whole account. And um, it's Gears of War 4 plus the season of Game Pass. Now, I could go into details. Well, let's, let's just check it out. See what we get into here. All right. They tell you that they got the full account with Gears of War plus season pass. And you can buy it right now for 10 for ten dollars. Oh shit. You know what I'm saying? But that's just the one game that it's coming with. So it's it's a fairly new account, I would have seen, I would assume. Um, it's a fairly new account that they had it on. They probably were a PlayStation person, right? And they were like, okay, let me try this Gears of War 4. And then they tried it like, no, nah, you know what? I, I I don't dig this shit right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got somebody else with Forza that did it. But then, you know, someone else. But then you got people that are just, they, they're sick of it. So here's somebody that you could tell had a, long, a longer account. This is what they, they've got on there. 
These are the games Battlefield 4, Borderlands 2, the prequel, Destiny 2, Dragon Age Inquisition, many other Forza games, Halo Master Chief Collection. You know what I'm saying? But they got 20,000 gamer store score. Final Fantasy 7. I can't that's that's not that can't be true, right? I don't think there's a Final Fantasy 7 on Xbox. I think they this is they made a mistake there. All right, so this is a newer account. But still, again, somebody else that probably tried out the service and was like, "Yo, why do I have this? This ain't working." And they, you know, they're auctioning it for $400. All right. Let's look at this one. Uh, this guy is auctioning his for six twenty five. Um, I think the gamer scores twenty nine thousand, but they got a bunch of games on here. The original State of Decay. This is a UK account. Yeah. This is right click the image and you'll see. Okay, let's open this in a new tab. Let's see what we work. Oh, uh oh. This is right click the image and new tab to see the screenshots in full. Uh, can I increase that? Okay, I can't see that. <laughs> but they're selling so you got 60 plus games 1200 in value you know what i'm saying this is a place where you can go guys to sell your xbox xbox live and this thing is bumping like i've been checking it out like i want to say like once or twice a month just to see where it's at this thing is bumping So I would, and it's slower, it's a little bit slower now because I would surmise that Gears is out. People want to try out Gears. They're giving it like a second trial. They're like, let's see, let, let's see here. You know, Gears has rendered the most excitement for Xbox in a long time. So I get that part of it. But with that being said, if, Gears falls flat on his face or if Gears just ain't enough and Microsoft doesn't seem to be turning that angle. Then again, after you let your services lapse, auction your Xbox Live account. Then the next step I would do is trade in all of your Xbox hardware. Like trade it all in. Trade in the, 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 the console the physical games and get some store credit and use that money towards the purchase of a next-gen console. And if I had to recommend one, again, this is the hard knock digital culture, baby. I get, I get a hey, look, nothing against the switch. I get the switches making moves and I, and the switch because of all the third party support that they are welcoming. The switch is not on. The Hard Knock Digital Cultures anti-hardcore gaming watch list. We yes, we actually have that. We're gonna post that results of that for uh, pretty soon. But we actually are gonna uh, have that. And with the Hard Knock Digital Cultures uh, anti-gaming uh, anti-hardcore gaming list, actually Microsoft is making it. <laughs> Microsoft is on the list. They're the only ones on the list right now. But it's not finalized yet. And the Switch isn't on there. Again, not, the Switch isn't so much a hardcore machine, but they are embracing hardcore content. More so than, the, than Microsoft is. So, I want to say, with that being said, trading your stuff, preferably for a PlayStation 5. Or if you're a PC gamer guy and you or gal and you were trying the Xbox and you're like, nah, this ain't my cup of tea. After you let your service lapse, 
after you tr traded your Xbox Live account online and you traded all that stuff in for cash or credit, go go beef up your PC. And I rec and again, I recommend the PC that I talked about at the beginning of the stream. My PC, which is a hold on, let me see here. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Do 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 do. Am I still here? Dashboard, order history. Oh man, oh they gonna make me do all this shit. I ain't gonna do that, man. Hold on, let me see. Cyber power. Here we go. Um. Hmm. Let me see if I can do it this way. Cyber power says. Uh, do 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 um no i can't find it it's called though a cyber power it's a cyber power c 780d is the name of the machine cyber power c 780d oh big ups to more one again with the 50 bits he says they trying to reach the masses, but like you say it without the hardcore to promote the mind share, it will not work. No one is talking, getting rid of their PC, their, P their PlayStation or Switch. No truer words have been spoken. Like I've always said, Morwen, here's the problem. In order for you to leap into a new frontier, you have to springboard from something. When you totally disregard your hardcore, you springboard from nothing. I'm still for the life of me trying to understand how if after E3, you do that coffee shop shit and nobody's on board to save you and cap for you then. And after this whole Rod Ferguson smoking thing, Nobody was there for you to cap for you then to save your hide. Let's go to Sea of Thieves. When Sea of Thieves was getting clowned and stuff like that, the cappers didn't come out enough to, 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 to make excuses for that until it got more content. Crackdown 3. When Crackdown 3 was getting torn in half, you had people that said beforehand that they're going to put more time into that, into Crackdown 3, than they were God of War. And guess what happened? What happened? Crackdown 3 is a desert land. Right? Right. I don't understand for the life of me, Morwen, that after all these events, while Microsoft think that they can springboard from these cappers. I mean, and when I say cappers, I mean the people that are making excuses for them. Why do they think this? They're nowhere to be found. Nowhere. I just see I got a new messaging app, but I'm trying to check and I don't see anything in the in the queue. But again, if you can you can put it in the chat, I'll read it in the chat. You know what I'm saying? But that's what I, I don't understand that at all. Right? So in order for you to leap from anywhere, to leap anywhere, you gotta springboard from something. You gotta hop from somewhere. These people that go on Twitter with these Twitter fingers, you know what I'm saying? Tippity tap tap, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and do all this capping for you online. They're not buying your product. 
They don't like what you make all like that. They ain't come out there for Sea of Thieves. Definitely not for Crackdown. They didn't come out there to defend you for the, the horrible showcase that you did at E3. And they didn't come out even for Rob Ferguson with Gears of War. For the life of me, I cannot understand why Xbox thinks that they're going to utilize these people with these Twitter fingers out here on social media. That they're going to help propel them into this 2 billion crowd. Just because they're casual doesn't mean that they're stupid. These 2 billion gamers are going to look at your existence as a gaming company. They're going to see the sour and, and, and the, the, the unappealing um, praise that you've gotten from, your, from, from the majority of your crowd, or at least half of them. And they're going to say, I don't want nothing to do with Xbox. I don't want nothing to do with Microsoft. Their own people don't even like them. I don't get why it just doesn't soak in. But apparently to them it's going to work. It's like they cross their fingers, they squint in their eyes, like, please, 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 please. That's why it's all the more impaired, and they're not listening to reason. That's why it's all the more reason for us to ignore them. And ignore them financially. And when I say ignore them financially, don't buy their goods and services anymore until they prove to you otherwise. Like you, like more one said in the chat. You don't hear PlayStation people. You don't hear anybody else talking about how they're leaving their system. They're not happy. We're the only ones. Why is that? Because Microsoft has found a way to make money without having to satisfy its client base. Now, you may run into situations where uh, uh, a consumer base may have to deal with some fuddy-duddy stuff. Like, you know, like what comes to mind is the red ring of death. A 60% failure rate. I mean, that was kind of shitty, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But because we were getting the content that we so adored, we didn't care. They paid for it. We shipped in our Xboxes, sat there, waited patiently, and just started gaming. This is just a straight reversal of concern, of care, of respect to their brass. And what I don't understand is why Consumers think that they should still pay them for this disrespect. This is not a down period. This is not a rebuilding phase. This is the richest company in the world. What do rebuild what? Morwin with the 50 bits said problem is they are getting new customers. Only Xbox or a fan and of Xbox. And they ain't buying their product like that. Third-party developers will invest in PlayStation and PC where they're selling most of their games and be like Xbox can get the leftovers. And to that point, I think what's being missed in all of this is to what Morwin just, just alluded to. Y'all are sitting there like, ooh, Scarlet's gonna be more powerful. Ooh. And I and you know what? And I've even said that. So I, I can't I can't sit there and I, like I'm I'm an, I'm insane in all this. Because I've said Scarlet on paper is gonna be the most powerful. But what I've also said is it's not gonna matter. Because number one, micro it ain't about Microsoft not having the ability or the talent or whatever. You can they can buy that talent if they want to. You can buy them. They can change the order of things if they want to in a heartbeat, if they wanted to. They are the richest company in the world. They have more. They can buy out everybody at Sony. They can do an epic game to say, I want to drop that money on the wood. I want to give you that duffel. Come over here now. 
These people have families. They would come. But you know what it is? Microsoft don't want to do that. They don't care about that. We don't need to wait for the richest company in the world to figure it out. They just don't. We need to figure it out. They just don't want to do it. So because they don't want to do it, they don't want to make the investments as more one suggests. It don't matter what the scar is going to look like on paper. They're not personally going to make the investments to where the power of that console is consistently brought to the forefront. And like Morrowind said, they're going to expect third parties to do it. But third parties are going to look at that device and say it has low saturation, lower than Xbox One. You saw the lazy development that developers were doing for the Xbox One and particularly the Xbox One X. They were not tapping the machine for the full potential. And why would they do that when the most sellingest machine out there is the PlayStation family? They're not trying to shit where they eat. So if you think it's bad now, it's going to be even worse next generation. So unless we do something now, we, the, the, the time for talk is over. It's at the 12th hour. They're going to move forward with this plan. But the only thing that we can hope is that once they move forward with this plan and they lose severely financially and we make it very clear that they're losing financially because they're not servicing their hardcore because we took a step back and we're no longer just giving away our money blindly then it's then and only then will we get some change but we're not going to get it doing the get it and forget it with game pass we're not going to get it getting online and tippity tap tap, clickety clack clack, capping for them on social media. We're not going to get it with this whole leaf fill alone. He has to figure it out, even though he's a vice president of the richest company in the world mentality. No. Y'all got to wake up. This is not a sports team. You're a consumer. We need competition. I explain to you why. Competition drives better results. Particularly in the console gaming realm. We need that to keep each other, each entity honest. We got a part to play in that too. And if we're not doing our part by keeping our console of choice honest, then everybody loses. Again, you got two racers running a 50-yard dash. One, one starts to stumble, and instead of picking himself up, he just says, to hell with it, and just falls right on his face. The other one turns and looks, because he can't help it, and he slows down. It's just, it's like, it's just me and this guy on the field. I've won. So he may not slow down all the way, but he slows down a little bit. He wins, gets his trophy. He goes home. Other guy gets up and just says, I'll just wait till next race and then if I fall again, you know what I'm saying? But who loses out on that equation? All the fans that paid all their money to come and witness this event. Because they were not only looking for some good competitive spirit, but they were looking for good competitive spirit that would drive results that they've never seen. If that guy would have never failed, they could have seen somebody break a record. If Microsoft would have tried to compete at a AAA level or for the hardcore, we could have seen games better than last generation on a more consistent basis. And we didn't. I'm sorry. We didn't. We didn't because the console makers drive the narrative. And when the console makers are at their best, when a Mass Effect comes out and it blows people's minds, when an Uncharted comes out and it blows people's minds, that's what drives the narrative, whether it's PC anywhere. People say, oh, I wonder if I can do that too. And that's not happening. And it's not happening because we as the fans in that whole racing scenario, we keep coming and we're still buying tickets.
At some point in time, you got to say, the guy's just not stumbling. He's purposely falling. This ain't no stumble. Phil's been around since I think the late 90s, early 2000s. He's smarter than all of y'all, including me. He knows what he's doing. Y'all got to know what y'all doing. And what y'all need to do is y'all need to stop capping out here on social media. And y'all need to start holding them to account. Let your Game Pass lapse. Let your Xbox Live lapse. Hey, utilize Steam if you have to to get games all the court that you feel like are must-haves. And if you got to, go and sell your goddamn Xbox Live account and all your hardware and go buy yourself a PlayStation 5 or a new PC. But goddamn it, do not fall. Do not keep falling for this okie doke, as we say. Or keep letting them get away with this. This, this, this. this is an atrocity as far as the gaming community is concerned. Get it and forget it. You look at Netflix. I'm going to drop a video on this likely this week. Xbox says, we want to be the Netflix of gaming. We want to be the Netflix of gaming. Netflix has quality content. Guess what Netflix's number one and number two content is? It ain't all this MCU shit. It's number one, Orange is the New Black, and number two, Stranger Things. Those are the biggest draws to the service, is its own content. Quality content! You talking about you want to be the Netflix's gaming, but you ain't following their model. They're in the silo. They are so I'm 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 resigned to believe that the people in Redmond outside of business do not travel out of Redmond. They do not interact out of Redmond. Not not this new culture. And they have this belief, the system of what's going to make gamers tick, what'll work, you know, the psychological ploys, which did work earlier on. Got your boy hype. But they think that even after all this has been revealed, after it's all evident now what the hell's going on, that people are still going to fall for the okie doke and they're going to get enough support to springboard them into this 2 billion gamers. And no. You're not going to have enough support to springboard y'all y'all with this bloated garbage, this shovelware. You got to get the hardcore up there. You got to springboard from our, our hardcore from our from our hardcore forms, okay? You're not going to with what you're presenting right now. And if we got to hit you in the pocket to make you understand that, then it is what it is. Give up that coffee shop mentality. Give us a hardcore game to consumers. They're not stumbling. This is not rebuilding. They have changed the guard. They're pivoting. They're going to a different model. They're not going to give you what you want. They know what you want. Phil's been around for a long time. He's not a dumb guy. He's trying to play that whole innocent, ooh, unaware, and just clumsy role to fool you. But y'all got to stop being the fools. And with that being said, I'm going to close out on this note. Homie Morwin says, facts. Sony is beating Microsoft into the dirt. Why? The Sony need to bring the AAA front where they have no competition. Example, Spider-Man best-selling hero game ever in, in under a year. You don't have the... You don't have the plethora, that is, of great titles like Morwen is alluding to to challenge a Spider-Man. To push that envelope even further. So because of that, we're all going to be ass out as gamers if this trend continues. So we got to hold Microsoft accountable. This is the best way to do it. Hit them in the pocketbook. 
I went over everything. If you need to see it in physical form or in written, I got a list of it. Just hit me up on Twitter M- at MM2K. I'll send you the list of what you need to do specifically or rewatch the, the podcast, whatever you want to do. But again, if you want to go the moderate way, just let your services lapse. Keep your existing library, the digital library, okay? Keep the console. Do that trade-in for physical to, to digital if they don't flip-flop on that. And use that combo to utilize xCloud for your old games. If you see something a la carte, shit, get it on PC. Do the play anywhere. Now, I get it. If, you want, if, you're, doing, if you're going from PC to Xbox... And you don't want, and you're gonna play on Xbox, and it's a multiplayer game. You got to get live. All right, well, go find some cheap codes somewhere, man. Go like on CD Keys, find some cheap codes that just last you for the duration that you're playing that game. But don't be locked into their subscription service. That's how they're going to survive off this bullshit uh, strategy. You know, utilize Steam for their a la carte purchases, standalone purchases. Like if you're like, oh, I got to get the Halo Infinite, what your boy's going to do. I play on PC. I, I'm I'm going to prefer playing Halo on PC. They gave me that option. I'm going to buy it for, on a cheap on uh, PC. I don't play multiplayer all like that. I might play it. So if I feel like that I got to play it on Xbox, well, I ain't got to play it on Xbox because I can do cross play with my homies via the PC. And I don't play keyboard and mouse. <laughs> I'm, I'm a player. I play on controller. So I can play with the broadband bullies on PC. But if you got to play on Xbox, you know what I'm saying? And you want to play with the Xbox crowd, they go get you a cheap card just for the duration of that time frame that you're playing the game. Don't lock in, into their services or their ecosystem. And if you just don't want to deal with Xbox at all, then dump them and roll, man. <laughs> Stop, drop, and roll. Let your Xbox Live lapse. Let your Game Pass, whether it's console Game Pass or PC Game Pass, lapse. Auction your Xbox Live account. And I'm going to copy this again. Put it in the chat. At playerauctions.com forward slash Xbox Live. I'm putting that in the chat again. Click that link. Check out how it works. It's very limited right now because Gears 5 is coming out and people want to see what that's about. But once Gears 5 is over with, and, or if it loses its luster, and people are like, all right, what's the next one? You got to wait till Halo Infinite? I'm telling you right now, let it lapse. Trade in all your shit and get, uh, <laughs> get, you, a, get you a PlayStation 5 for next gen or get you a, a, a nice PC. The PC that I got is the Cyber Power. Let me type it in the chat. Um, real nice PC. Cyber Power. Uh, I don't forgot the name of it already. Cyber Power C780D. Uh-oh, come on, come on, come on. Cyber Power C780D. It has an i7 in it, 8700, along with the RTX with the ray tracing, baby, 2070. Cost me $1,100. But by the time next gen starts rolling around, that very same setup can get you for probably $800. It's not bad. It's not bad. And if you got a little extra trading cash from all the shit that you traded in, you might bump it down to like 600 or something like that. King Reaper 74G said, it's still people that's going to buy the new, if, if people still going to buy the new box. They may not. If they're smart, they're not going to buy it. I will, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. Why? What do I need to buy a box for that's going to have low saturation and low support? I might as well use it on my PC. Why would I invest the five, maybe $600 into a box that's really not going to get supported by de- de- developers because it's going to have very low saturation? Why would I do that? It doesn't make sense to me. 
And if you don't believe me, look at the Xbox One X. The Xbox... I love my Xbox One X as far as the console is concerned for multiplayer games. But the power of the box has not been tapped at all. Not at all. At all. Hell no. Why would these developers go through the pro process and, and waste their time doing it for a box with low saturation? Microsoft unwittingly went and tried to sell you the Xbox One S as their primary console. They went and created DX because they felt like they had to change the narrative, but they don't change the narrative enough by promoting the X primarily. They promote the weakest console. So again, let's let's go over this again, y'all, because these, these, these are these are the people that y'all want to cap for on social media. Instead of giving you new games, they said we had a choice to make. We either had to give you a new console or a new game. We felt it was more important for the future of Xbox to give you a more powerful console to, 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 to defeat that whole power narrative, right? So they don't give you new games. They give you a more powerful console. With that, you get that more powerful console, but you market the weaker console. You put the weaker console out there in front street and rarely market the more powerful console. But again, the more powerful console was needed to defeat a narrative that you're perpetuating yourself by promoting primarily the weaker console. These are the people that you want to cap for. I repeat, for anybody that comes across an Xbox that want to Argue this, this foolishness. You make a choice. You say, I'm not going to give you new AAA IP because I feel it's important to give you this new box because we're dealing with a power narrative. However, you perpetuate that power narrative by promoting the weakest box out there this generation. Out of the, the, the big two. Out of like the five or six consoles that are out there for the big two, you put the weakest box out there in the forefront, further perpetuating that power narrative in the competitor's favor. So you got people out here that were suckered into buying a $500 box that are not getting the full throttle support that they should be getting because it's not got heavy saturation. And you try to get them to buy some goddamn Super Lucky Tales, Zoo Tycoon, Disney Rush, X and Hands. And you wonder why I'm upset. And you guys want to cap for this. It's just a mistake, MM2K. It's just a mistake. For those of you that don't want to listen to that noise, to that garbage. This is what I urge you to do again. Hit them in the pocket in order to get them to do better. We're at the 12th hour. So all these gamers, all your favorite YouTubers that now at the 12th hour, all of a sudden, the same ones that laughed at Z, that, that, that you know what I'm saying, that tried to cyber bully Z, so they's gonna knock him out of his pumas, right? And all this other stuff. All those people out there that did all that, that now want to, Follow the same blueprint as, as next gen after they beat them down in their minds and they made them seem like uh, somebody that didn't know what he was talking about. And I remember those podcasts calling them fools and laughing at him and all other shit. You know what I'm saying? But then it's still his blueprint. All those people that are coming out now, they're only coming out now. They didn't come out before. They saw this before. They, they, they didn't come out before because they felt like capping for Xbox that consumer base that they had was lucrative for them. And there was no way they were going to give that up. Now that you can no longer cap for it, the, the writing is on the wall. Now they want to have their epiphany at the 12th hour. Don't listen to those people. I'm just going to tell you front, straight up. Don't listen to those people. They are not consumer advocates in the slightest. They're doing this solely for themselves. Even in my... Xbox capping days. I've I've always been consistent. I've never ever been fully comfortable with Phil. A 
I've always said I got to judge this guy by his actions because it's just something funny. And the more and more I said that, the more and more he did to make me feel more and more uncomfortable. Okay. But these other guys, for them to do a complete 180, just like that, they're not consumer advocates. Just listen. If you're going to listen to them, just listen to them for entertainment purposes. They're not to be taken seriously. With that said, going into the next generation, if you're one of these guys that understand that Xbox has now pivoted away from you, but yet they want to use your money to springboard them into taking care of some other group, then you're going to have to pull the rug right from under their feet and make them fall right and flat on their face. And you're going to have to let your services purge and get ready for, for other platforms. You know, PlayStation 5 is welcoming, welcoming you with open arms. I get the whole controller thing. There are controller adapters out there that will allow you to take your place, your Xbox console. Get the more expensive ones. They're like $40 or more. Don't get a cheap one. Get like one that's $40 or more. It's an adapter that has no latency pretty much. That'll let you control, bring your controller over. There's also controllers for 150 I know next gen bought one, but there's a cheaper alternative. You can just use the adapter. In addition to that, um, you know what I'm saying? There, uh, that, that's console. There's, there's also um, for PC. If you're a PC gamer, there's you play plus and Stadia, the free version of Stadia coming next year and time for the next uh, generation of consoles. And you'll be able to stream 4K60 if you need to. I don't know why you need to 4K on, on, on a phone. But whatever. If you need to stream 4K60 on a phone, you can do it, you know, with the subscription service. Or you can do it free 1080p60. You can stream your Uplay Plus games. But Uplay Plus is already going to be better than Game Pass. Period. Sorry. Then you got Steam in the whole mix. And you can get your Steam, you can get your Xbox games off of Steam if you got to buy them a la carte, and you can stream them through Steam as well. And if that's not good enough for you, then you can auction off your Xbox Live account via w.playerauctions.com, Xbox Live account. The link is in the chat. So with that being said, people, I appreciate everybody that came through. I want to give a shout out to all of y'all. King Reaper 74G, man. Big ups to you, man. Morwen, thank you for the support, brother. I appreciate you. Sorry for the snafu. Um, who else we got? Raging Not, the homie Raging Not. Thank you for coming through as always, man. Thank you for dealing with me. Um, and I and Platinum, thank you for dropping by. I appreciate you. Hey, yo, check us out weekly. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we're gonna try right now. I, I did a, I did a night podcast. I tried to do something that, you know, was, had a little bit of availability for everybody. So we're trying to figure out our time, but we're going to do this once a week. We're either going to do, we're going to either do it at 9, 30, 9, 9.30 or 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, it all depends on what, what, where we get our most response from, you know what I'm saying? So if you want to, hey, for my people that are watching right now, it, you know, we start at 9 p.m. Eastern. If you want to keep this up, I highly suggest that you go tweet this out, let people know so we can get more viewers at night, you know, wherever we can get the, 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 make the, the, the biggest outreach is where we'll keep the time frame at. Um, and like I said, please, um, you know, any support that you can, you can provide, you know, uh, feel free to do so. There's links below, you know, check out the, the, the content, the material, the streams. We are going to be doing our anime slash martial arts show um the the martial arts part of it is called the thousand punch podcast where we highlight martial arts movies i want to talk about my man uh m ali i forget i don't know how to pronounce his own but, but my man very talented brother nothing against him but him getting that role for blade yeah, i don't know about that <laughs> you know what i'm saying and his whole it, it just it just speaks volumes of this whole direction that they're trying to go with Blade under this whole MCU Marvel, you know, cinema universe thing, you know, so. But with that said, I want to thank everybody for coming through. I appreciate all of y'all. Thank you so much. Um, 
stay tuned for future content. We're going to be doing streams tomorrow and all that good stuff. And with that being said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.